Okay, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining me. This is Adam Victor Kilo Two Papa Whiskey, and uh, today I want to make a quick video uh, explaining how to enable and get working uh, Receiver Two uh, on uh, HP SC. HP SDR's Apache software uh, known as Thetis. Okay, so I am making this video because uh, I had a lot of trouble uh, enabling Receiver 2 and getting it to actually work the way you would expect it to work. Um, out of the box, Thetis seems to have a few presets uh, that need to be either turned on or turned off uh, so that uh, Receiver 2 will behave the way you would expect it to. I think it might be configured out of the box for Diversity Receive. Uh, maybe that's uh, more important to some people and that's the one that they've left on by default. Uh, but if you're, if you're new to Thetis and uh, if you've ever tried to get Receiver 2 working, uh, you probably end up like me, very, very confused at first. And uh, there's a few steps uh, that can help you to uh, get it up and running properly without any troubles at all. So let's have a quick look uh, at the Apache uh, at the Apache Anon. This is a 7000 DLE. Uh, I'll just go to 14, uh, 20 meters, which is where my antennas tuned so that we've got a few signals there, something to look at. All right. And of course, on 20 meters, we operate in upper sideband. Uh, and you can see here uh, by the bandpass filter there that is on the upper side of, uh, of the line. And there's a few signals going on up there. We won't uh, cause them any problems. We're not going to be transmitting or anything like that. So um, you can see all the controls uh, uh, for receiver one uh, are, are around the outside border here of the display. Um, you know, you've got your uh, your filters here, you've got your modes here, you've got your bands here, and this is your receive uh, your receive filters. You know how wide you're receiving. All right. Um, so pretty standard for uh, an Apache, and uh, it's probably the same on almost all radios have some sort of controls like this in the amateur radio hobby. Now, if we turn on receiver two, which is located here in the top left-hand corner, uh, you'll notice that it splits the display into two, which is good. Um, the image in the background is a little bit confusing. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it off, which is just a matter of going into setup, appearance, and I just disable it like this. It just makes it easier for us to see the two displays. Now, the upper display here is receiver one. And again, I'm going to go back to 20 meters. And you'll just notice, uh, first of all, when I change frequency, you'll notice that VFOB also changes frequency as well. And it's exactly the same frequency. If I want to change them individually, I need to lock uh, VFOA. So we'll go back to 20 meters and I'll lock VFOA. And now I can change this individually and I can choose a different band. So in this case, I've got 20 meters up the top and the uh, the spectrum and the waterfall. And down the bottom, I've got 40 meters. And you're probably thinking, well, 40 meters looks like it's dead. And it is. And the reason that it is, is because by default, the settings in the back end, uh, I think they're configured for diversity as a default. Um, so it wants you to be on the same band when you change frequency. But in this case, I don't want it to be that way. I want to be on 20 meters here and listening on 40 meters here and perhaps even on a different antenna. So if I go into setup and I go into general, uh, sorry, into general and I scroll across here to ADC. All right, so here's ADC. Uh, towards the end there. And you'll notice that by default, these are set to default. So if I set to default, all right, uh, DDC3 is set to ADC1. Now, what we need to do is change it to ADC0, and you'll notice in the background there that uh, the second receiver comes alive. So that's the first thing we need to change, all right? So if you're sitting there trying to think, why can't I receive anything but what appears to be just a, a very, very, very low noise floor uh, on my second receiver, it's because your ADC for that band is not enabled, or for that receiver, I should say, is not enabled. It needs to be on ADC zero. So if we apply that and go, okay, now we've got both bands running. 
But we still have this problem whereby, sorry, if I unlock this, where if I'm on this band, it's keeping my other band. So I'm receiving on the same band. All right, I'm receiving on the same band. And uh, we want it so that uh, I can receive on this band and this band's a completely different band altogether. And the reason is, again, uh, by default, uh, stereo diversity is enabled. So if we click this or uncheck this box, you'll notice now that, well, in this case, this jumped to 10 metres. It probably didn't need to, but maybe that's what it was set to uh, from just what I was doing before, uh, earlier on, you know, before the video. All right, but now my bands are separate. And if I change on this band, uh, you'll see it, does have, it doesn't have any effect on the uh, 20 metre band. All right. And now I'm receiving on both bands independently. So now we've got basically a full dual receiver uh, working the way you would expect. The other issue too is if this stereo diversity is turned on, which I've just enabled, if we go to lower sideband on uh, receiver two, which is, remember all our controls for receiver two are along the bottom here, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, these eight boxes, these are all receiver two. Everything else is receiver one, all right? Nothing's changed there. It's just put all these controls underneath it. So if we go to lower sideband, you'll notice, oh, 20 meters went to lower sideband as well. And of course, 20 meters doesn't operate on lower sideband, typically. Uh, it operates on upper sideband. So if you've got S stereo diversity enabled, you will have reduced your ability to change bands because, oh, sorry, to change your mode because it's configured for stereo diversity. And of course, in stereo diversity, we're just using a different antenna to receive at the same time, but it's assumed that we would be using the same mode, lower sideband. Uh, or upper side band together. So turning off stereo diversity will give you the freedom then to change uh, your primary receiver to upper side band whilst not affecting what your lower receiver is doing. And we might be on uh, 40 meters on our lower receiver here and we want to be on lower side band. All right, so it's very, very simple to change that. Now, I'll just quickly cover one other thing, which is how do I get it to transmit on a different antenna? Maybe you've got uh, three different antennas uh, for your station. Uh, you might have an antenna that is for 20 metres to 6 metres. Then you might have an antenna that is only for 40 metres. And then you might have an antenna that's like, uh, say, an offset off-center fed dipole uh, that you have connected to a tuner and that tunes from 30 metres down to 160 metres. So you'll find the controls for that in setup and antenna filters. And what you need to do by default, these will all be configured like this, everything out antenna one. And you might also see these two boxes ticked, possibly, maybe not. All right. So this is basically saying do not transmit on antenna two. Now, if you've got a receive only antenna uh, connected to antenna two, maybe you've got uh, a Wellbrook loop uh, or, or something, something that is is just cannot receive power in any way because it'll either damage it or uh, it just can't receive it. Whatever the case might be, then you would plug that antenna into one of these ports, two or three, and you would disable the ability to transmit. And uh, it doesn't matter if you select uh, transmit over this side; it will not transmit on that antenna. All right, because you're telling it do not transmit uh, on these receive antennas to protect them. But let's say we don't have that and all of our antennas can be used to transmit. Um, we would then choose which antenna. So we said we might have our 40 meter antenna uh, is on antenna port number two and everything below that is on antenna port number three. So if we're transmitting, we want to transmit on our 40 meter antenna on antenna port two and we want to transmit on antenna port three for all the others. And if we apply that, you'll notice now, down the bottom left-hand corner here, it's very, very small, but you can see it. You can see that it says transmit on antenna one. Sorry, I won't hold my mouse over because it highlights the box, but this is the box here. You can see it says transmit on antenna one. All right. Now, this, we remember we changed 40 meters to be antenna two, but because I've got the transmit on antenna one, it's showing trans, uh, antenna one. But if I change this transmit, this transmit uh, to the 40 meter band, you'll notice that suddenly changes to number two. 
So now we're receiving and transmitting on antenna two for 40 meters. And if we go down to, for example, uh, I don't know, somewhere on a 20 meter band, you'll notice now that it's changed to three. And that of course will be the same for 160 and it would also be the same for 60 meter band uh, if you are actually using that in your, uh, in your country. So that's how you change your transmit and receive antennas uh, to work on the bands. In my case, it's not quite so simple. First of all, all my antennas go through a switch and all those switches go to antenna one. So there's no point for me to have all this switching. Uh, antenna two and three on the back of my rig are just not connected. Everything goes through antenna one. Um, but the way I operate, that's not an issue. I use my switch to change uh, antennas and everything comes in on antenna one. So I don't have to worry about that. But if that's how yours is, then that's how you can set it up. And you can do that for any of them. You might have, uh, you know, uh, a 15, uh, you might have a tri-bander, uh, on antenna port two, sorry. You might have a tri-bander up there, all right? So you would uh, put your transmit for 15, uh, 20 and 10 here, and then you might have a WARC tri-bander, all right, on antenna ports, uh, what have we got, 30, 30 meters, 17 meters, and 12 meters. So you might have this kind of thing. Uh, and then you might have a six meter antenna on uh, on one and well who knows uh, you i'm sure everybody's got limitations but uh, that might be your configuration as an example all right so that should help you to get your uh receiver two working properly and allowing you to transmit and receive on different antennas um, uh, and have complete freedom over your configuration Hopefully that's uh, of a lot of help to everybody. Thanks very much for watching. This is Vic the Kilo, 2 Papa Whiskey. All the best, 73.